Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Committee Reads. I am your host Kaiju X and with me today I have Harley and Joe. And today we'll be going over match 116, C-Rex versus Ebera by Christian Salibur. A pair of slaves ran across the sandy shores of Paris. Lecce Island, trying desperately to escape their ter terrorist captors. As they reached the waves, they realized they were left with no other choice and leapt into the water, swimming as hard and as fast as their bodies could handle. Catching up too late to stop them, the soldiers chasing them fired their machine guns at the fleeing duo, but they were already out of range. But despite the potentially potential escape of the two slaves, the Red Bamboo captain grinned evilly. They may have escaped from us, but they won't escape from Ebra, he cackled. He quickly redirected his men to the base's dock to get a better view of the slaves' fate. Just as the group of soldiers reached the dock, the water began to churn and bubble. The captain's grin got wider as a huge shelled form began to rise up out of the ocean. But his look of evil glee soon turned to a look of shock and confusion when, instead of Ebera, out of the sea rose the tentacle beast, Crustaceous Rex. Opening his flower-esque face, C. Rex let loose a whale-like cry. Looking downward, he spotted the fleeing slaves, who noticed the mammoth creature too late. Before he could even begin to turn and try to swim back to shore, they were ensnared by Crustaceous Rex's tentacles. I'm hearing myself again. Uh, uh, never mind. Hoisted high into the air and stuffed into the sea creature's mouth. The mutation swallowed the two swallowed the two a moment later, but their meager size failed to sate his hunger. Looking for looking for more food, C Rex began making his way towards the island. Crustaceous Rex had barely taken two steps towards the island, however, when the ocean waves once again began to turn behind him. One dark red claw pierced the surface, then another. Pulling the rest of his mass out from beneath the waves, Ebra let out a high-pitched screech, quickly grabbing C-Rex's attention. The yellowish mutation turned to face the new arrival, letting out a battle cry and flexing his tentacles. Ebra began waving his arms around, snapping his pincers open and shut, ready to drive the stranger beast out of his waters. Both sea monsters immediately went on the attack lunging f towards each other. Ebra's claws clamped on Crustaceous Rex, Crustaceous Rex's powerful legs, but the mutant's, t mutant's tentacle lashed out, wrapping around Ebra's arms. As Ebra tried snapping his foe's legs in half, C. Rex began pulling the lobster's arm, tr trying to wrench Ebra's limbs out of his sockets. The overgrown shrimp's claws began cutting into C. Rex's flesh, leaking green blood into the water. Groaning in pain, Crustaceous Rex op opened his face once again and unleashed a thick torrent of tar from his mouth, covering Ebra's face. The mighty Crustacean released his opponent's legs and shrieked as the boiling black gunk covered his face. As C. Rex righted himself and raged to attack, Ebra plunged under the waves, trying to wipe the tar off his face. Flipping around, he swatted Crustaceous Rex's legs with his tail sweeping them out from under him and sending him crashing beneath the surface. Pass. Thinking to the ocean floor, Crustaceous Rex managed to get back to his feet and spied Ebra, who had succeeded in getting the tar away from his eyes, allowing him to zero one of the tentacled monster. Moving his tail up and down, Ebra made a beeline for Sea Rex, his arms outstretched and his pincers open. But Crustaceous Rex was ready for him, raising one of his legs up and smashing one of his large feet into Ebra's face, stopping the lobster's charge, stopping the lobster's charge cold. Mm -hmm. The watchdog mm -hmm. was quick to respond, however, backhanding C. Rex with his large pincher, staggering the mutation. Damn. The yellow beast reeling from that blow, Ebra raised both his arms and brought them down hard on the Crustaceous Rex's back, shouting a thunderous crack reverberating through the water as their bony armor collided against each other. Rex reacted quickly, snatching Ebra's right arm and legs with his tentacles. With a mighty heave, Crustaceous Rex brought Ebra down and smashed him into the rocky groans, stunning the oversized shrimp. As Ebra tried to regain his wits, C. Rex raised his leg and stomped down on his foe, trying to crush him underfoot. 
Edward's shell started to crack before the lobster even realized what was happening, and he began writhing about, trying to get a hold on his foe, but he was too far out of reach. It was then he realized that Crustaceous Rex's, Crusta Crustaceous Rex's leg, the one that he was standing on, was not too far away from him. Pulling his arm back, Edward stabbed his smaller pinch directly into Crustaceous Rex's foot, just as a large crack broke across the main section of his shell. Haggard back, wailing in pain as his foot leaked blood, while Ebra climbed onto a nearby rock and came up with his next move. Subsiding, T Rex turned and Debra moaning angrily. The mammoth lobster shook the pins shook his pinches as taunting the mutation. Furious Crustaceous Rex charged, extending his tentacles. Ebra leaped off the rock, opening his pincers. They met violently, their impact sending a shockwave through the sea. The clash was brief but fierce, each creature trying to end the other as fast as possible. Screams of agony suddenly echoed through the waves, and both monsters quickly backed away from each other. Crustaceous tentacles fell to the ocean floor. Ebra's large pincers similarly hit rock bottom. Pass. Joe, you're up. I fucking <laughs> The two underwater behemoths glared daggers at each other as they momentarily licked their wounds, formulating their next move. Their main weapons had been weakened severely, severely, and they both knew they had to be careful with their next attack. Everest soon climbed back onto the rock he had left from before, eyeing Cyrex, whose own eyes hadn't left the cr crimson crustacean. He quickly glanced at the ocean floor, spawning a weapon he could use, then returned his vision to Ebra. He stepped forward, ready to attack. Once his foe was close enough, Ebra leapt towards crusta crustaceous, crustaceous Rex again, aiming his one remaining pincer at the mutant's mutation's face, planning on spearing his head with it. Crustaceous Rex was quick to react, however, and his one last tentacle reached down to the ground ensnaring Ebra's dismembered claw. As soon as the enormous enormous shrimp was close enough, Cyrex thrust his tentacle upward. Ebra's pain screech was cut short as his own pincer sliced into his soft under underbelly and burst out the broken shell covering his back. Cyrex released his grip on the claw and set back, allowing Ebra to sink to the bottom floor twitching and bleeding, writhing ab about in the mud and rocks. Ebra tried to strike back at Crustaceous Rex, but his life was ebbing away too rapidly. Within moments, Ebra lay still. Cyrex stepped up to his kill and, using his soul tentacle, started to peel away Ebra's shattered shell, ripping out a chunk of meat and stuffing it into his mouth. The mutation wailed contently. This was far more satisfying than Squid. Winner, C-Rex. Alright. Uh, I, th I, re I really like this match. I think this one gives a good, like, uh, decent, like, underwater... I like the way it starts. I like the, like, uh, some of the underwater dynamics of the two combatants. I like, uh... Like, I kind of, I really like the way it ended, too. Freaking, uh, C-Rex using Ebra's own claw to dismantle him. That, that's really nice. That that's yeah, that's a really good way to uh, finish that. Uh, so yeah, all right. Like a, like I have little to complain about. It's probably one of Christian's more solid matches that we've read, and I love the banner. Oh, I love the banner. Oh yes. Oh. Uh. Ooh. So during the reading, uh, Grayshot finally came back home from work. Uh. So. Uh, but we got... Finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I uh, didn't quite, uh, get the chance to give him any parts to read, but, you know, at the very least, Grayshot, uh, <laughs> like, I know this match is technically part of your continuity, if I remember right. Uh, so, I'm sure you probably have an idea of what happened. Uh, what'd you think of it? Uh, Grayshot? I can't hear you. <laughs> We cannot hear. None of us can hear you. Uh oh. See, I, I don't think he's. I can't. Uh -oh. I can't hear him, but I can hear the rage. Um. Uh. Mike's not working. One second. 
so okay, uh, Harley, would you? Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll loop back around to Gray Shot uh, eventually. So Har- okay, 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 okay. there, there we'll, he we'll is. Save, we'll save the. Okay, so I'm on my phone staring at my computer because my microphone, all my computers not working. But yes, I honestly did enjoy this match. I like the setup with the red bamboo. The ending is also I think it's one of the first times ever has been impaled by his pincer. I think so. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's one. Of, it does become a, like a trademark of the character. I know, you know, spoilers for a later match, but I even do that. <sighs> Because it's such a uh, cool idea, the whole ripping off and then stabbing uh, Ebro with his own, uh, well, his best weapon is awesome. But, uh, yeah, this is in my timeline. Do it. I'm sorry, what? You mean his only weapon? Listen, he's got a, he's got a tail. He can, like, stab <laughs> <laughs> Don't kid yourself. Uh, I mean, other than pressure. I mean, that is his other secret weapon against Kong. <laughs> pressure. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, but yeah, no, pressure. otherwise, <laughs> really good match with Christian. It is kind of, that is kind of the reason why I wanted to reference it. Uh, for my own KWC match, which is, I think it's 167. I think that might be what it is. Or may, maybe it's another one after. But, uh, 164. It's, it's, no, 167. No, uh, <laughs> uh, Z- I think it's uh, Cybercats over C-Rex, I think. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that one has uh, yeah, this one. T-Rex. Even has the uh, there's the it has my horrible banner by comparison. It has a dead ever in it. So if you want to see it, oh, you know, this great banner, and then look at one that's utterly atrocious. Go check out that one. <laughs> oh. Please, he admits it. But that's my uh, general thoughts. All right. Yeah, uh, I think I gave my piece. Uh, Harley, what'd you I think of it? My... I'm gonna agree with you guys. It was a pretty solid match, especially for Ebra. Ebra is one of the people in a powerful way. They don't write in a dominant role. So seeing Ebra actually somewhat on equal footing with another kaiju is really, I think, helps the match instead of just him being like a joke. Mm-hmm. And I think that and I think they did a good job with that. So, uh, I'm glad we agree on that. Uh, Joe, what do you think of it? Uh, I'm gonna agree and say that yeah, it was a good match. Uh, I had a solid fight. And Ebra and C-Rex are a good combo for each other. Yeah, I kind of agree. And I, I like how I like how it ties in with the with the ram the red bamboo. And I, re- I really like the beginning where. T Rex comes up and eats the and eats the slaves instead of Ebra. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, what we should get for the fu- what we should get for the future is uh, for Ebra and C Rex working together. That'd be Ooh. fun. Oh, that'd be really cool. So. Like the. The red bamboo get end up getting C-Rex. Yeah, eh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So, uh, with that said, this has been match 116, and we will see you guys next time for match 117. Till then, folks. <laughs>